questionable marketing campaigns have caused significant upset recently, but is it all just a matter of poor taste and lack of oversight, or is it something else entirely? I'm Yasmin Khan with The Breakdown, and honestly, this story is so out there, and there are so many different ways to think about it and for me to present it. I will just do my best to present everything to you, and as always, you can do what you want with all of it. So that said, let's start with Tampax. In what was presumably a cringy attempt to be relevant or edgy, Tampax sent out a tweet that read, you're in their DMs, we're in them, we are not the same. Okay, it's a weird tweet, and I'm not one to period shame, but like, who was that tweet even for? Now, that's the less hot take of that tweet, that it wasn't anything anyone asked for, that it was a lame attempt to be exigent, that it was a misappropriation of a popular meme executed by people who aren't cool enough to pull it off, that it was just bad marketing, which is just something that happens to the best of the biggest corporations. Innocent misstep, hindsight is 2020, etc., etc. Now, some people thought the wordplay was funny or amusing, which I can only assume is what the authors of the tweet also thought. That, of course, is giving them the benefit of the doubt. Others, however, found it quite disturbing considering the fact that children under the age of 18 use tampons and Tampax products. Given the sexual nature of the tweet and its implied context, the tweet wasn't just read as wildly unfunny and inappropriate, but predatory in nature. Now, moving on, let's talk about Balenciaga. By now, I'm sure you've heard about the Balenciaga ad campaign that went viral for all of the wrong reasons. In fact, you probably have even heard about it even if you don't pay attention to what's going on in the world of fashion. This story transcends the fashion industry and it seems to have transcended any sort of right-left divide amongst people within the country. So very briefly, Balenciaga's recent ad campaign featured small children holding teddy bears that were wearing what appeared to be BDSM-inspired bondage harnesses. The photos were part of a campaign to promote Balenciaga's bag collection for the spring slash summer 2023 season. In one photo, a Balenciaga bag was sitting atop a document of the Supreme Court case United States versus Williams. Now this particular court ruling was an interesting inclusion because it upheld the PROTECT Act, an act that increased and clarified protections against Balenciaga, for its part, is trying to find a fall guy, initially releasing a statement saying that they were, quote, taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating the set and including unapproved items for our spring 23 campaign photo shoot. We strongly condemn abuse of children in any form. We stand for children's safety and well-being. The part that set people off was the part about responsible parties, as if Balenciaga was trying to imply that they themselves were not responsible responsible for their campaign, not for its conception, not for the photo shoot, not for approving the photos, and not for releasing the photos. The photographer also tried to evade blame, claiming to have only lit the set and shot the photos. Balenciaga has since sued the campaign's set designer for $25 million. The designer's agent issued a statement regarding the lawsuit saying, quote, everyone from Balenciaga was on the shoot and was present on every shot and worked on the edit of every image in post-production. She also claimed that the court documents used on the shoot were, quote, obtained from a prop house and were rental pieces used for photo shoots. Now, following the release of the campaign, people immediately started looking to Kim Kardashian for a statement, which didn't come for several days. Kardashian is known to work with the brand. Notably, she wore an all-black Balenciaga getup at the 2021 Met Gala, a controversial look in its own right that one writer referred to as BDSM chic. Now, I want to be clear here, BDSM is not the problem. If you're into that and you're in a consensual relationship, fine, no one's mad about that. The obvious issue here is the use of children in these images and the allusions to Regarding Kardashian's ongoing relationship with the brand, she released a statement on Twitter that read, quote, I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaign and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take the necessary measures for this to never happen again. As for my future with Balenciaga, I am currently reevaluating my relationship with the brand, basing it off their willingness to accept accountability for something that should have never happened to begin with and the actions I am expecting to see them take to protect children. Now, Kim, who herself is the mother of four children, has since been accused of saying a whole lot of nothing, with her entire statement suggesting that while she doesn't condone which is hardly a stance that should just be a given, she's not necessarily willing to break a business deal over any of this. 
On top of everything, there are ties between Balenciaga and Adidas, the latter of which very publicly cut ties with Kim's ex-husband Kanye West, or Ye, over his recent anti-Semitic statements. All right, so with all of these characters in play, and I feel like I've just scratched the surface of all of this, some people are saying that this goes way, way beyond bad marketing or bad artistic judgment. On a good day, it usually doesn't take long for any story centering around the Kardashians, Kanye, or really any high profile celebrity or fashion house to devolve into a conversation about the Illuminati and or Satanism. This Balenciaga story, and to a lesser but still significant extent, the Tampax story, has it all. The people who tend to whistleblow these type of stories always focus on symbolism, and there's a reason for that. Art is full of symbolism, and the symbols artists use within their works and in their own public portrayals are doubtlessly deliberate. Art is also a scapegoat in and of itself. An artist doesn't necessarily have to believe in or embrace the things that they portray, and it shouldn't be assumed that they do. For instance, a singer can sing a song about committing acts of violence, whether or not they ever have or if they ever would. Now, Hollywood is full of artists. They're a category of people that are easy to demonize, in this case, literally, because they portray themselves as being counterculture, as being eccentric, as being sometimes too open-minded. They're aspirational to many, and they're often called geniuses, a moniker that helps to dismiss any kind of destructive behavior said genius might exhibit. The rest of us just aren't on their level. We can't conceive of their genius, and we shouldn't even try to. But if people are on the lookout for any kind of satanic symbolism in art, and if the artists, I'm assuming, know that people are on the lookout for these symbols, why do they include them? Remember that old Maya Angelou quote, when people show you who they are, believe them. Now, all of that said, while this story has delved into the fantastical, one thing that I think is worth mentioning about this whole Illuminati slash Satanist narrative is that it tends to displace blame. It assumes that people are only evil if the devil is involved, and it dismisses the possibility that people can just be evil on their own. It also doesn't do much for actual victims when the people fighting these particular battles are doing so by going to church and praying Satan away. So how does something like this ad campaign happen with so much oversight? Was it meant to happen as part of a sinister Satanist agenda, or was it just capitalism at its utter absolute worst? Okay, that is it for me. If you got anything out of this, please like and subscribe and be sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you.